Hello again. The more observant of you will perhaps notice that I've turned into a survivalist or prepper and am now established in a remote stronghold with a astoundingly bleak day call of patchy internet reception. Actually, I'm in Wales doing up the crumbling ruin which we have acquired and shifting out our belongings here bit by bit. A process which at the moment promises to occupy most of the few remaining years of my life and trying at the same time to write a western every month which I have committed to doing in a contract. <laughs> in the description to this video I give a link to the first in a new series which I'm knocking out for an American company. The lovers of pulp fiction, this really is something quite special. Uh, anybody um, that wants to sample my creative writing can click on the cover of that Amazon book and sample this, uh, the opening pages of this um, interesting work. I'm bound to say that I love being in Wales. This is because the people here all share a common heritage with me and I know what they value, what they find unacceptable and that like me they know how to live together peacefully without stabbing each other up, setting off bombs, chopping people's heads off or generally behaving like hooligans, terrorists or religious maniacs. It is like taking a trip back to the 1950s, which at my age is a good thing. Let me give one example of what I mean. All the people I meet here have, like me, family connections with the British Army. Their fathers, grandfathers and great-grandfathers were likely to have been in the armed forces. Throughout much of the 20th century, nearly every man in Britain was in the army at some time or another. My own father fought in the Second World War, as did my uncles. Both my grandfathers were in the army during the, Second, uh, the First World War, rather. And, of course, conscription did not end in this country until the early 1960s. The army has always been an important feature of life in Britain. For this reason, Whenever I pass a war memorial, I always pause to read the names of the fallen, simply so that these men are not forgotten and that even a hundred or more years later, their names are being thought of. I know that other older people do the same. Even younger people in uh, many British areas still have a respect for war memorials and know of their significance in the psyche of the British people. The thumbnail to this video shows the War Memorial in Loughton, the town on the edge of London from which we are in the process of moving. It is becoming very popular these days with Romanians, Bulgarians and Poles as a place to live. The other day I walked past this War Memorial and the woman was sitting on the ledge about it, drinking a can of Coke, smoking a cigarette and chatting on her mobile telephone. Her two young children were trying to climb up it and generally treating the thing like an adventure playground. The mother was Romanian, and right there is what I have tried to explain over the years to the viewers of this channel. Why should she have any interest in, let alone respect for a memorial to the dead of the British Army? Nothing to do with her at all. I don't suppose she even knew that this was in a sense hallowed ground. Her own culture and identity is utterly different from my own and altogether alien to me. I have a shrewd idea that if anybody decides to sit down and have a cigarette on this town's war, war memorial, somebody could soon drive them off with a few well-chosen words. All I want in my declining years is to spend my life with people who share a background with me and have similar values and beliefs. I'm sorry if this is interpreted as racism or xenophobia, but there it is. <laughs>